Okie dokie. Well, this is a obviously pretty naff diagram, let's be honest, but it, it will prove the point. <laughs> I'm just going to move you guys out of the way so that you can okay. see what's what. So when you place your camera down at the water's edge, so essentially what I've done here is I've placed this tripod down at the water's edge. That is literally where the globers want you to measure your height above the water from, right? Which seems pretty logical. You know, I mean, it seems reasonable that that is your height above sea level. But my research recently has basically thrown a spanner in those works for the globe side. And that is because that isn't actually correct. Because where your toes are and where your tripod would be right next to the water isn't the height of the water when you go out into the ocean or across a lake or anything like that. And that's for two reasons, especially in, in the ocean. Um, over the ocean, you always get what's called a swell. And a swell can be anywhere from, from half a metre to two or three metres in a swell. And on top of that, you get waves. So the best way to explain it is if you had a bed with just a mattress on, and they want you to place, uh, pretend that the mattress is flat because they want you to always assume a flat surface without any undulations on top. And then you throw the quilt on top of the bed, right? The quilt is in effect the swell that goes on top of that. That would right. be the swell. Um, and they're longer waves. So they are waves that are about 30 seconds in duration. So from the peak to the next peak it takes about 30 seconds to actually get to the shoreline. That's why if you're stood by the shore, what, what will often happen is you'll see a few little waves lap up against the, against the sandbank that you're standing on, and then you'll get a bigger wave, and then it'll go back to smaller waves, smaller waves, smaller waves, and a bigger wave. Yeah. Mm. And what, what that is, the swell takes 30 seconds to go from its peak to the next peak. So it's a bigger wavelength. And as I say, it can be from anywhere from, say, half a metre in height to two metres or three metres in height. Yeah. And yet the waves at the top, the wind driven waves, they are only between three and six seconds apart. So these so, would be like equivalent to the same kind of waves that surfers wait for. They wait for the pattern of waves, don't they? So they yes, wait for the smaller one and then it's that that breaker wave that they go for. Yeah, that they yeah. surf on. Yep. because mm. what you'll see is you'll see that <laughs> the bigger wave comes with the swell. So with the swell coming in, so if you get a wave that sit, mm -hmm. that's, that is exactly on the top of that swell as it, hit, as it comes into the shoreline, mm -hmm. that is when you get the big waves, the right. breakers, the ones yeah. that the surfers want to jump on. Yeah. But out to sea, let's suppose and you look out to sea and you don't see any waves, pretend there's no wind at all. There's mm -hmm. absolutely no wind. It's a really calm, clear, crystal clear day, but there will still be a swell. There will still be a swell. And this swell will be higher than where your feet are at the shoreline. So if the swell is, a, if you, let's suppose and you have a two metre swell, it's something that you wouldn't see, you wouldn't notice it, but it will still be there. Now that means that one metre will be um, above the, the sea level where your feet are at the, at the water's edge and one metre will be below it because it's a peak and a trough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're actually measuring across this line, what you're actually doing is you're actually looking into a one metre swell. And that one metre swell is about three, just over three feet of obstruction. Now, if you had your camera set up to four feet and you give yourself a one foot, uh, sorry, a, a, a four foot above sea level, that wouldn't be correct because you would have to be looking over the swell, which is mm -hmm. about three, just over three feet uh, in height as you go out to sea. However, we all know that we get waves on top of the swell and uh, the waves would uh, go as an addition on top of the swell. And uh, let's suppose you had uh, winds of say uh, 20 mile an hour winds, you could expect anywhere up to five feet in height of, of, of waves, which would mm. mean that would be two and a half feet extra would need to go on top of the swell. So if your camera height was set to four feet and you had a three foot swell with a two and a half foot wave on top of it, you are looking over the water. So you're not, you're not, you're below sea level. You're actually below sea level. And yet you will be calculating it four feet above sea level, which is wrong because you're not taking into account these waves. Rock Nest Island wave height. Now this is just, uh, you can check this out yourself guys. If you go to uh, the Rock Nest Island swell forecast, 
This will mm -hmm. give you the swell forecast for Rockness Island. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got today's date, Wednesday, the 8th of May. I know it's going out on Saturday. I do apologize for that. But, <laughs> um, right now, right now, we have a two meter moderate swell. If you see, I'm hovering over this cursor. It says two meters moderate. So that will be, that's how, that's the, the swell in this location is already at two meters. So the amplitude of that will be half. Now the amplitude is what's above sea level. So that will be one meter of swell will be higher than your feet at the water's edge. Hmm. Yeah, and that's just the swell. That doesn't even include the wind, uh, the wind driven waves on top. Um, if I show you another image, um, let's see uh, the amplitude of a wave. This is uh, essentially what I was talking about right then. Uh, this right. is the, the amplitude of the wave is the part that goes above where, you, where this red line goes. So yes. this red line is where your feet are at the water's edge. Uh -huh. The amplitude is everything above that, the height above it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what it is, uh, you've got the WMOC state code, which takes into consideration things, including the swell. So it will have a, a C state. So you can check if you was doing some filming in, let's say, Lanzarote or something like that, uh -huh. or in and around there. You could go to the C stakeholder and find out what the C stakeholder is for that particular region on that day when you did the observation. Okay. Now, let's suppose it gave you a C stakeholder of four, right? That would be taking into account the winds, um, the swell, and the wave heights. Um, it would basically say that the wave height um, out to out to sea would mm -hmm. any be, be anywhere between four feet to eight feet in height. That would be the the, the peak to the trough peak to the trough. Okay. So you can check these sea stakes. Uh, so when your feet are at the shoreline, um, obviously these are designed for boats. <laughs> so if you're out to sea and you're on a boat, you want to know how, how high the waves are. So it doesn't really apply too much for shoreline observations because it doesn't take into account for that. But it's, okay. it's, it's, it's um, sufficient for us to be able to work out what the wave heights will be out to sea. So if they're quoting an eight foot wave height out to sea, the amplitude of that will be four feet. That will be the amplitude uh, above where your feet are at the shoreline. Okay. I'm going to have to ask some elementary questions at this point, and my apologies sure. to the chat room if everyone wants to get Timmy Mallet's mallet out. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get malleted for this. Um, this is just me. Yeah, I'm just going to put my hand up at this point and say, where your mouse is, see where the tripod is. Yep. All right, I know it's, this is just an image, right? I mean, a, 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 an optic to back this up, but what is the general considered, except how is sea level determined, like in the first place? So see where the water, see where, yeah. like, that's the bit where I'm a bit lost on. I'm a bit lost on what makes the sea, not what makes the sea level, but like, what? Well, how does one determine what the that zero range is you know when you can say yeah bang i'm at i'm at zero on on regards to height above sea level how how does one determine whether that's is that in the middle of high and low tide because it the sea the sea levels level down at low tide that's why i said i might need timmy's manic for this yeah this... i might ask a bookie question there but um the... that's how it is in my mind i'm like well i could be at the sea at sea level when the tide's down and I'm able to see Echo, because this guy the at Speaker's is, Corner, I he wasn't having any of it. When I said I'd, I'd done that, that observation when it was at low tide, he was like, well, then that technically means that you're... And then I was lost, and I was like, well, wait, hold on. Why does that... Good. Why, why when we're taking observations when the tide is out, does that just completely exonerate the observation that's been made? I don't understand that. Isn't, isn't when the tide is out, is the water has swelled up like the, the water's being, I, my, I thought that when the, it was something to do with the moon's magnetic pull and it was the water being pulled by the magnetic, um, you know, the, the magnetism of the, of the moon. And so if it's, if it's drawing it away from the shoreline, it's, it's either swelling towards the other shoreline that's there or it's, it's swelling up, you know, say between La Gomera and Tenerife, like to make it relevant to, to, to where I am. When the we don't, man, we don't really have tides to be honest. We do, but it's not that noticeable. It's not like 
you know, like in Cornwall, when you go surfing, you want to find out when high tide and low tide is because the difference, you know, the, the, the amount of beach that is uncovered when, at, at low tide mm. is, um, you could, there can be miles of beach in areas of Cornwall that's uncovered. Whereas here, low tide and high tide, the, dif- the difference is about, you know, it's a, it's a matter of metres on the so for context of this this conversation does high tide or what what difference does high tide and low tide make to authenticity of observations or does it not matter um it depends if you've got um if you've got somebody on the other side of the the, the lake or the water or whatever so it is for this, yeah to... for this one that we did we did brighton to woking and we were yeah. both at low tide well to, to be fair that would be uh acceptable the only thing, the only difference would be is if he was trying to measure it against a known height above sea level of, say, a building. So let's say you saw some buildings in the distance and they were, uh-huh. quote, they were quoted as being, let's say, eight metres above sea level. That's their quote. Well, that isn't, that isn't eight metres above sea level at low tide. Okay. So when you're trying to work those calculations out at low tide, you've got to add on. And if we were just doing low tide from one laser to the other, and we were just trying to look at the lasers that were both at the water's edge on yeah, each that's side, absolutely that'd be fine. okay. Okay, absolutely cool. fine. Okay, because great. And for chat room, I hope that resonates with a lot of people in the chat room as well. The, I mean, to me, it seems that what it does is it makes it all very inaccurate. We can't we can't really accurately um, measure things because you know the swell of the water the yeah the like like something being lifted as being eight feet above sea level but it, it's not really it's just an, an estimate it's like a, it's, it's around eight feet above sea level um the problem is the prob- all this does though all, but all, the, all this does it, it doesn't weaken what we're saying at all because all in like when I'm stood at the beach and I'm saying the camera's six um, six feet above sea level, the swell between me and um, Gran Canaria or Lagomero or whatever, the swell is never gonna like. It, it, and that's it's what I want to learn. This be for what, because... what my what my measurements, what my observations are, are, are going to be. Like I'm saying that I'm six feet above sea level, but actually it will work out that I'm not. I'm below sea level, so that, it makes that's my what I'm hoping we're going to work out more credible. Where do you t- where do you take what, in, what's... instead of yeah, damaging? Yeah, let's go through it now. Rich, explain to Ranty exactly where you're making your um, observation from. Yeah. Well, can you see how it's a darker blue? Yeah. Around this location, yep. that's telling you that it's a higher swell. The lighter blue is a light swell, and then the darker blue is a deeper swell. So it's not actually giving me the exact readings right now. I'd have to figure out how to use this particular site. But straight away, you can you can already see that there is a, uh, a quite a swell in this location. And obviously, if you're up here, this swell in this location where it's red is going to be quite really pronounced. Because yeah. obviously, this is really deep here. This is right. a really deep, deep area. I, I can I recall this area. It's very, very deep there. Okay. Um, and you get an awful lot of... High, you know, the swell will be quite high, mm, mm. especially here. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, definitely something to look into because if you're encountering one to two meter swells or three to four meter swells, straight mm. away the swell is going to be higher than than your observation of six feet. If you're still at six feet by the water's edge, you're going to be below the actual sea level just on swell alone That's without good. it. Without even so, taking into account the height, the, the height of the wave. So if there's a four foot swell, yeah, that would be two so foot of obstruction. Oh, yeah, but or would there would it be two foot of obstruction, or I'm two foot above sea level? My actual observation is two foot above sea level. Well, uh, let's just let's draw it out for you. Let's uh, nice. let's, give, let's give you an idea. Um, well, I'm just gonna, just bear with me whilst I put this together. So obviously we've got the water's edge there. We've got point A and point B. Let's do do them in black. So point A, point B. So you're trying to film point B. Let's suppose it's a 10 mile observation. So you're looking across, trying to see something 10 miles away. Mm-hmm. Um, you've now set your tripod up. So you've got your tripod set up um, on the water's edge at say six feet. So I'll make these a little bit bigger in a minute so you can see. So. There you go. They will say to you, right, you are six feet above the water. 
right? Because that's mm -hmm. where you're, you know, you're right next to the water's edge here, mm -hmm. right? But what you don't realize is that out to sea, uh, you've got the swell that takes effect. So let's put some swell in. Uh, let's do it. Let's suppose in that you're six feet in observation. Let's suppose in there's a two meter swell. So that's 3.3 feet of swell when you get to about this location. So let's put that in. Right. So there's 3.3 uh, feet of swell. Uh, and let's suppose that you've got um, some waves as well. Let me get a little bit bigger. Let's suppose you've got some waves. Let's suppose there's a 15 mile an hour wind and you've got probably four foot waves. So again, you have to halve that because half will be the amplitude. So you've got to add another two feet on of waves. So you're adding your two foot on of waves out here. Sorry, I'll let me get rid of that last bit, but you see what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. so now when you start to, to work this out, when you're trying to look from point A, which is um, here, and you're trying to look over to point B, mm -hmm. what you're realizing is that you're skimming the top of the water. Mm -hmm. So you, you might assume correctly at the shoreline that you're six feet above the water at the shoreline, but the way that the, the, the oceans work, et cetera, when you start going out across the lakes and the oceans, these waves get bigger and bigger the further out you go. And especially in the oceans, you get the mm, swell mm. that starts to compound that too. Mm. So what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that you're above sea level at here or are you above sea level? Because this is the sea level as you go across the water. You have to look above that. So when you're doing your measurements, instead of putting in five, uh, sorry, six feet above sea level, if you've got three feet of swell and you've got two feet of um, wave height, your height above actual sea level is only one foot. Well, it's not uh, yeah, six feet. What... Yeah. It, it's not six feet. It can't be six feet because yeah. you, you've got waves and obstructions in the distance. Mm -hmm. And one other thing that I would like to say mm -hmm. is that the sea state or the sea swell giver that for the height of the, the waves on any particular day, and this is really important, if they give a, uh, give a give it you as 2.5 meters, so they will say, oh, yes, we, we, we measured the waves in the 2.5 meters, and that's the statistic for the day. One in eight of those waves will be higher than the given statistic. Right. So one in eight of those will be higher. And that's just for boats to understand when they're out on the, the ocean that, that to expect that one in eight of those waves will be higher than the 2.5 meters. So they won't be shocked. Mm. Um, however, because you're doing it as an observation, what you're looking at is you're not just looking across eight waves. You're looking across a thousand waves from point yeah. A to point B, which so means you've got to include that that a rogue eight wave. Yes. Eight, so you, every eight wave, you have to include that. So what that says is, it, it, you know, even it, it you know, for, for a boat, it's fine. But for an observation, you have to go higher than the given height because you will be looking across those eight foot, though every eighth wave, you will be looking across the highest point of that. So in effect, what you can actually do is say, well, if you're six feet above sea level at the shoreline and you have three meter, sorry, three feet swell, two feet wave heights, you can add another foot on for the rogue waves at every eighth wave because you're doing it as an observation and not as a boat on the shore on the waves. You're doing it as an observation. So your actual height above sea level is going to be zero. It's going to be zero, even though your feet are six hey. feet, even though yeah. your feet and tripod are set six yeah. feet yeah. higher. Because of the swell. It makes, yeah. Yeah, that makes absolute Boom. sense. And that absolute for me, sense. zero is the magic number. That was the magic number I was asking for. How can we, where do we, how, what is sea level and where is it? That's, thank you. Good. Do, you, do you know what what it says to me is that if anything this world's a little bit more concave man <laughs> <laughs> because they're just so visible and if things are so visible at sea level you know if you can see something 125 kilometers away at sea, sea level mm. and think of what the swell is going to be between between Tenerife and um and you know there, mm. there could be huge huge mm. swells between mm. the two mm. if you can see it it's and this is something i've never heard of wave shoaling until you mentioned it the other day i've never heard of that word before shoaling wave shoaling well if you notice that in a lot of locations in fact every location in the world that has a a land mass or maybe um, i did hear it in geography back at school well maybe. the rate the raised parts that we live on on the mm. earth the raised parts we live on the land Mm -hmm. um obviously they're the highest point um and they're surrounded by water 
But what often happens is you have a, a, some shallow water for maybe a few miles, and then it drops off quite severely into the deep ocean. Um, and this ocean, you know, these depths can go for miles down, miles and miles down of, of, of depth of, of ocean. And then when you get the tides pushing in and, and receding, and you mentioned it just before, actually, um, what you'll have is you'll have a, a pressure being applied as the water is moving in from right to left, you get something called shoaling. So as it's trying to be pushed up this embankment here, what you get is, it's perfectly described here. This isn't my writing. This is uh, an exact um, quotation for what happens with wave shoaling. Mm -hmm. And it is in shallow water and parallel depth contours, right? Sounds, ex sounds a bit extreme, but parallel depth contours are, uh, hang on, let me see if I can get up Google Earth. That might be the easiest way to, to do this. Let's. So I showed this example yesterday, but it's really quite, I mean, you can see it on Google Earth straight away. Can you mm -hmm. see these lines? Can you see how this is a, a pretty defined line? And you've mm -hmm. got another defined line here, mm -hmm. and you've got some light blue area, which is the shallows. So let's, let's scroll in a bit and just show you, show you what's, what's happening in these locations. So if I hover my cursor over here in the bottom right-hand side down at the bottom, you get a, a meter value. So right here, we're looking at 40 meters. So that's the depth of the water at this distance. So let's put some a line in there. So that's that's 40 meters depth. So it's pretty shallow. So we'll save that and then we'll do another line and we'll see what happens when we go to the same distance. So we go from 40 meters and we do the same again. And we're now down to 545 meters. <laughs> that's a massive drop off. Over a very over a short distance, so from mm. so from land to here was only forty meters, but mm. from but from there to there it's dropped to five hundred and forty five. That's a massive drop off. That's so, massive, yeah. And and it, it it's and it's along this entire shelf. It's a shelf, so this is a parallel shelf. So from mm -hmm. there that point there to to this point here, it's roughly the same. Mm -hmm. So you've got yeah. a, a line of very deep. And then you've got um, a line of very shallow. Mm -hmm. So in my diagram, which was a side on view, which is this one here, it's a, a line of very shallow and a line of very deep. So in shallow water and parallel depth contours, that's exactly what it's talking about. Non-breaking waves, which means that it's just the, the actual height of the water in that location, will increase in wave height as the wave packets enter the, shallow, the shallower waters. So what that means is that as the tide's pushing in and it's encountering this steep incline, the water has nowhere else to go. It has to be forced up. And it's called, you know, in my opinion, it would be localised bulging. You know, the, the mm. globe always talk mm. about the bulge of the earth. Well, yes, and I do believe that you can get bulging. It's localised and it's localised in areas just like this off the coast right. where the tide's being pushed in and when the tide's receding too. So if you're an observer from the shoreline, and you're trying to see a boat in the distance, just on shoaling alone, just on shoaling alone, you're going to get an obstruction. The, the water is being forced up due to the in incoming pressure of the tides and the receding pressure of the tides too, because it, as it's trying to resist, it's trying to, a, a light area of water is trying to force its way into a deep area of water so it bulges up again. So you've got the force and the receding, both of them will cause this shoaling in these particular locations. Um, and this can be seen worldwide. So whenever you see a boat that's probably 20 or 25 miles out to sea, not only are you encountering the, the waves and uh, the swell, but you've also got to take into account the shoaling that's going on that's going to be artificially increasing the height in these locations. So just going back to Google Earth Pro, uh, wherever that is here, so along this ridge here, along this ridge, right across there, we're probably going to have anywhere, you know, I can't give you a, a, a number right now, but let's just say, let's just say five feet. Let's just say five feet. We're going to get localized bulging to the height of five feet in this area due to the shoaling that's going on, right? That will cause blockage. You won't be able to see the bottom of boats as they go further away. And on top of this shoaling, you will have the, the wave heights, the cresting. Um, the, the, it depends on how strong the winds are. You also have things called spray that comes off the top of the water, off the top of the waves. That is going to cause obstruction too. 
all this thing will compound what you're trying to see. And when you're trying to see a bolt in the distance over here, you won't be able to. And it's just due to the movement of the water. Right. Got it. For once, I can say I got it. <laughs> Have you got it, Rich? I hate it when that happens to me because I'm like, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's really good because that does explain to me why when I'm um, when I'm observing Las Palmas, which is the the airport and the little mountain on the to the left of um, Gran Canaria, or on the, it's the left side of Gran Canaria. When I'm up at the junction to, to the motorway and I'm viewing from there, which is about... can you see what Ranti's showing us? Can you tell him where you're talking about? Okay, so. This is exciting. I like it. Ah, uh, right, so we're on the other side. Right, okay. There we go. Lovely. There we go. So zoom in. Uh. Zoom in. Zoom in. It's so a good observation, it. isn't it? See, right, see that rock there? There, there. No, up. No, that out rock. There, there. Yeah. Right, that's the beach that I filmed from. Oh, right, right okay. That's the beach that I filmed from. But when I'm at the beach, I can't see... Sometimes you can see the top of that mountain, and and sometimes you can't. But when you go up to the, when you elevate like forty or fifty meters, then you can see it. Yeah. And and I thought, well, that's not. It can't be curvature. That has to be swell or something. That well, has is. to be the water. I showed. You know what? I showed the video that Double O took of that observation. Um, the thumbnail has it stretched out on there. Um, we we showed it. And well, he, he he saw it good and proper. Well, what you can what you can safely say here is that you have a, a really sharp drop off. Uh, it's down to what we're we down to here. So we're down to eighteen hundred meters depth here. Wow. And it's down to fifty one meters there. So wow. so from so it goes from fifty. Well, from here it goes from where are we fifty one meters. And by the time that we've gone just two and a half miles, it's already down to 800, right? So in just two miles, it's gone from 800 meters depth. So that's over a mile. Well, I don't know, what is that? That's about, let's just say half a mile. Let's get it to half a mile, actually. So there we've got half a mile of depth at 2.86. And then you've just got a, a, a hundred feet or so. Wow, says. So it goes from that's half a mile. Deep. That's, that's not... so, so that's a massive inc that's a massive 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 in steep incline so when we're looking at this image here this is exactly what i was saying yeah, uh, yeah. just offshore it's 50 meters but you know you go out a couple of miles and it's down to half a mile in depth so it's half a mile deep here and it's just 50 meters deep here well all that tide as it pushes in and recedes it has to go somewhere it can't so can i ask a question at this point Ranty? this might sound a bit silly when Rich is looking to make that observation, is he better off going on a boat on a calm day to get past that that bulge? Yeah, it, it, the funny thing yeah. is, uh, when somebody did that before, um, we went down to Wales to do that, mm -hmm. uh, and they said they had a great lot of difficulty trying to focus the camera off the boat because even with the smallest the amount of swell, the movement, it, man, yeah, it's going all over the place. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you're fixed, if you're fixed on a tripod. Just a little bit of wind with my with what I use with that zoom lens clipped on the camera and everything. It keeps clipped on the phone. It just wobbles so much that um, even if you're using a P900, a bit of wind will when you're zoomed right in. Right. The amount you just move the tiniest, tiniest little bit, and it and it you know it wrecks it. So on a boat, you're never going to be able to do it. I would okay. suggest I would suggest doing observations um from one hour before low tide to okay. around about half an hour or 40 minutes after low tide so you've got like a couple of hour window so in the build up to, to the ultimate low tide and then just as it starts to come in and i would also suggest doing it just after the full moon as well for for clarity and also wouldn't it be good to send the drone out and get it down as close to the to the water as you can and just get pictures like that as well. Actually, that would be really, really, really useful. And I'll tell you for why in your location, why it would be so good, is that the drone that I'm after, which it goes, it can go up to eight kilometers. So let's, let's change this. That? Which one's that, man? Wow. And let's change it which to kilometers. Yeah, you, you guys need to talk some drone shot. 
So, <coughs> so here we go. So let's go out to eight kilometers. Well, you don't even have to go out to eight kilometers. <laughs> Uh, there's, so there's eight. So we've got 850 feet of drop off there, right? Oh, wow. So if you were trying to, right? So because these drones have elevations uh, set into their actual, um, right. uh, you know, you can set the elevation that you want it to be, mm -hmm. and it will it will fly out. It will do it, and it will hover across the water at a certain height. So this would be really excellent to try and show um whether where this bulge happens because you'd be able to go up and down and lower yourself behind this bulge and you'd be able ah, to film it yes you'd, of you'd be able to film it from the shoreline without being on a boat that's rocking around you can stabilize the drone can't the, you the camera will be yeah the camera the, the, the gimbal if, if it's using a gimbal never even thought of that so on this side so what you could have let me open this in uh, open with uh, the, the, the paints. Where's it going? Will the Parrot Bebop 2 power be able to do it? That's the thing. Um, I'll, I'll show you the one I've what I've asked the community to help fund, and let's see if we can put a formulation together of how we're going to do this. But if you had a drone, and let's say you set the drone to be 20 foot above sea level, mm -hmm. right? So it would fly out and it would go go like this, get to 20 feet above actual sea level. You'd be trying to film it from the shoreline. Now, at that distance, at say five or six kilometers, you should still be able to see that drone, um, even on a curved surface, curved earth. Mm -hmm. So as long as you've got your P1000 and you can, you know, you can focus on that drone, that drone's gonna head out to here, you've got control of it. If you lose touch with the drone and you can't see it, right, it's obviously mm -hmm. behind this this hump. Okay. Because you should still have line of sight to it. Mm -hmm. So the only blockage can be caused by this shoaling effect. Yes. So you so, would get it on camera to, in that sense. Yeah, we'd be able to prove the shoaling effect. Then, yes. With that. And that's 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 major because a lot of globe heads are using that as proof of curve. Am I wrong? No, no, you're absolutely correct. They will yeah. show a they will show a boat hidden by by water. What they claim is curve. And effectively all it is is this shoaling and if you look at a lot yeah. of the observations that they do it on it's right next to these great crevasses that drop yeah. right down like that where yeah. this shoaling effect will be taking place and it's it, I call it localized uh, bulging so that's all it is it's localized into this particular area but for every single person on the shoreline that will be obstruction every single person and anything that goes so. beyond that and disappears will start to be disappearing from the bottom up due to this effect the and it is a so. physical it's a physical obstruction it's not optical this is a physical obstruction by the nature of water and how the tides work right so what we're looking at here is we're looking at a boat that's that has some nice um defining features on it if you look at the bottom image this was taken from an elevation of approximately 30 feet um, and it was taken around about one minute before I took this observation um, on the two images higher up. Um, what we, what I've done here is I'm showing you how compression works when you the lower down you go. Um, and the, the point of this entire image is that two, about half of this boat should have been hidden to earth curvature at an elevation of about one foot. So when I was when I was taking this top image here, half of this boat should have been hidden. To earth curve right and when i was high up this was the image that i got of the boat as it looked so what we've got is we've got um obviously the word stena line and at the very bottom we've got this um very noticeable orange part of the hull which is very low down you, you, maybe a couple of meters above actual sea level this this orange part and when we look at the image taken from one foot what we can clearly see is the orange part underneath the words of the stena line mm -hmm. and this is the most interesting part of everything. Like it's squished. Is that this this part of on this image here? All I've done is I've cropped out this part of the boat. All I've done is I've cropped it out, and you can see that I've measured it up. It, it you know so that everything seems to line up widthways. Uh, so it's it's scaled width widthways, and I've taken out this part of this boat here, and I've laid it across here. So now you can see 
Can you see how their aspect ratio is very similar? In fact, there's hardly any change. They're the same width, same depth. This is the lifeboat, this is the lifeboat. And, they're, and there's the top of the boat, and there's the top of the boat. And they're all relatively the same. And everything stays the same in the wider angle, because this is a, a higher up angle here that we're trying to look at. But when we narrow our viewing angle, we go lower and lower, we get closer to the water. What we're going to see is we're going to see that the compression starting, this, this S and the whole wording for Steneline, is half the height of the wording on the bottom image. It's half the height in the very narrow viewing angle. But in the wider viewing angle, the top part of the boat maintains its aspect ratio. So what that's saying is it's saying that the bottom part of this boat is being squished down whilst maintaining its width. So if you're looking at a building in the distance, let's say, and you see the building lights and you see the windows and stuff like this, um, and you don't see the bottom part or you see a lot, of, you know, a lot of compression going on. It's the same with this. All the image is visible. Everything on this boat is still visible at one foot when half of it should have been missing. Right. All of it is all of it's still visible um, and it's just being compressed down. And I've got I've got more images to, to prove that exact point. If you want to look at this is the sea truck image. This is another boat that I took. This is an image that I took from Google. Um, didn't do it myself, but this is the image that I've got from one foot of the same boat. And I've, again, I've scaled it to length. I've got a very similar profile to a side on view. And what you can see is that the wording sea truck, they're a little bit wavy and all over the place, but they're still visible and they're squashed. The bottom part of the boat is squashed, whereas the top part is maintaining its aspect ratio. Um, I've got one more image to show you, which is Panda Boat. This is awesome. Filmed this recently at Wales. So this is the same boat. It's called the ICD Conquest. Uh, this image was taken from Google. Uh, these three images are the same image. I've just switched them around so that it, it lines up with this boat. So I've scaled it to width. So it's the same width. Um, but look what happens when I then place it side by side and I look at it. Can you see how it's only half the height? Whereas scale wise, width wise, it's ideal. It's the same. So we didn't hear you then, Roxanne. Sorry, yeah, it looks like it's just been squished down. But it's been I can see it's all still there. It's just squished. Yeah, and what's interesting is that you, because this is a very easily identifiable boat and it's got uh, black, white, <coughs> black, white, black, it's very easy to see that same pattern on this boat. Black, white, black, white, black. So we're seeing all of the boat. Um, and the interesting part, again, is that two-thirds in this particular case, two-thirds of the boat should have been hidden to earth curve, right? That was what the measurements to the earth curve calculator says. So in, in effect, what we're looking at here, this white part of the boat that we're seeing in my image, the middle white part or the top mid white part, that's where the curvature of the earth should have blocked everything beneath it. Now, if you scale, if you, if you used to flip that and you did a blink test over this one next to it, it would match up this, this where it meets the, the white part, all the lower part would be missing it would be behind earth curve but it's not because it's still all visible we can see that it's all still visible um it's just been squished so what they've done is they've co-opted um this squishing effect um into the curve calcs essentially and um as i say it's it's very evident that this is observable repeatable on days when we get very clear weather this is an effect that happens it does happen sometimes you get an inferior mirage that blocks stuff off but when you don't get an inferior mirage, you get this compression. You're still on mute, Roxanne. Yeah, this is this is really useful because, as I said, I've come up against people that have said that this is because of the curvature of Earth that we see things like this. But you can clearly see on these images that's not the case. No, well, it, it's all still, you know, it's still there. Well, if I um, if I just open this again in paint and I, I, I'll explain a little bit clearer what I meant by when they do a blink test. So we'll go, you'll agree that I've scaled it width ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let me just uh, crop to selection there and I'm going uh, to copy that and then bring the original image back up. Um, and this is what a blink test is. A blink test is where they, they basically flip it over and flip it off, flip it off, flip it off. And they'll say, oh, look, it's scaled to width ways. But when you when you measure it to the height, 
yeah the height runs out there yeah mm. which is about this part of this bolt here so mm -hmm. let's put a line in uh so then we put a line in and they'll say there's the blink test there's the result oh look there's the bot all that miss all that's missing on the bottom but because this is very clear where you've got these different colors the color yeah. stripes you yeah can, you can you can say that's incorrect because we've seen all the bow <laughs> but if they just blink tested it on a normal black and white boat or a gray boat or correct. something in the distance yeah they could get away with saying that oh look look, half the bolt's missing. Well, that fits in with the earth curve calculator. Mm. Yeah, but because I've been lucky in finding these different bolts that are you know, pretty easy to, to see these different things on, um, you can still see that you're seeing all of the bolt mm. um, and it, it, a lot of it should be missing. And the good thing is that I don't just have these on um, still, sh uh, still shots just like this. A lot, a lot of them are taken from video footage. So, and right. with every video footage, if you've, if you've been following my work, you know mm -hmm. for a fact that as soon as I've finished my videoing, I zoom back out, I show him my exact location, show exactly where I was standing, yep, I sort you through the video. So everybody is crystal clear, knowing the time, the date, the location, height above sea level, yep. all that kind of stuff. And um, Yeah, you and, are. You are thorough with it every time. And this is why, you know, when I present something like this and I can say, um, okay, so this is how much the curve calc say, nobody really argues with that anymore. They used to at the very beginning, but now mm. that the, so the, they literally just know that I'm just going to be on it and just say, look, yeah. this is what we're seeing. This is, you know, this is reality. This is reality. This is reality here. This image is a real, a real image of this bow that should, that over half of it should have been hidden to earth curve. Correct. Right. And it wasn't, it was all Correct. still visible. It was just squashed. That's the point. And just on the um, the point about this inferior mirage, about things hiding things from the bottom, this was taken from another uh, video of mine just before Christmas. I think it was on the 24th of December. I went out and did a, uh, a time-lapse video. And I was filming Barrow in Furnace. And there's this boat, there's a boat in the background. This part here of, is the front part, of, or the back part of it. And this is the front part of it. And this other boat, this is another boat in the foreground. It's a different boat altogether. So we have two boats in the same image. But in, in neither one do we see the bottom of the boat. Now that's important because it is hidden clearly by an inferior mirage. If, if we put a line through um, on this and we've got a line there, there's an inferior mirage of that boat. So that's a mirror image up and down of the same object. Um, and we have a mirror image there of the front part of the boat. As you can see, it's, it's a mirror image. You've got this white part here, and underneath it, you've got the reflection of it. However, on this boat in the foreground, which is a bit nearer, we have a mirror image. But look where the lines are in relation to each other, and the one in the foreground. If I put a line through here, there's a line there. That's where the inferior mirage starts on the back one, and that's where the inferior mirage starts on the near one. Can you see there's two different distinct lines there? And what that's showing is it's showing that it can't be earth curve. If it was earth curve, there'd just be one line. There'd be one line where the crest of the wave, where the start of the curvature of the earth was, yeah? So that's where the curvature of the earth would be, which would mean that the boat in the background would also have its inferior mirage in the same point. It would have it in just, there would just be one spot of where the inferior mirage happens. And the fact that this happens in two places, one higher up on, than the one in the foreground, proves that it's an angle like this it's an angular relation rather than a solid um earth curve because if it was a solid earth curve the um the curvature of the earth would be here and you'd have a different line and the one in the background absolute concrete proof that it's not earth curve i'm going to list i'm going to list some um some achievements off for the the the, the flat earth debate team of of have helped to bring Great. about this year so yes, so one of them is this particular image here the inferior mirage now the bottom of the boat is hidden you can't see it on either image both have a, a mirror image of themselves and it's an atmospheric reflection because you it's definitely not on the water line and this has been demonstrated and proved and the globers have now conceded bearing in mind the global hierarchy as well not just your every everyday everyday glober um that this is an effect that they used to claim that the inferior mirage blocks the bottom. So the inferior mirage was where the curvature of the earth is. They've now conceded the point 
that blockage can be caused by the atmosphere due to the inferior mirage. So the bottom of things can be hidden behind that, it's just that we can't see it. So that's one massive step forward for the Flat Earth Debate team. Um, we've also uh, done work on the compression issue, which when it was first spoken about, they laughed their socks off about it, didn't want to even entertain the idea. Now apparently it's a well-known fact, the globe are well of it, uh, aware of it now, and they are trying to work this into their ray tracing um, <coughs> stuff that they're going to be doing with the curve calcs and stuff. Um, more recently, we've now figured out this wave shoaling that happens. Obviously, this wave shoaling here, the image that we've been looking through, and also the waves as well. So obviously, this wave blockage. Hang on, I'd better get a better image up than that. Um, this wave, this these waves um, causing blockage. Um, now yes. needs to be taken into effect. We now need to we need to take off the height of the swell and the and the height of the waves when we're include when we're doing our curve calculators because no longer can you say when your tripod is at the sea at the shoreline and you say you're six feet above the water level that isn't the case. You could be below water level as you look out across the sea, mm. which is going to mm. change all the observations going forward because these waves and the swell are higher than your camera height is, even at six feet on the shoreline. It's just the mm, nature of the waves. Yeah. Can I, can I just, would, would it be okay for me to just, you know, put a disclaimer at the start of every observation from now on to say, bear in mind, actually, I might be stood underneath sea level because of the swell. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good idea. Cause, cause yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not going to bother including the swell in my calculation because it's only going to damage it more for you globe believers <laughs> so just to help you guys yeah help it help you out i'm not going to include this but if i did <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but if i did <laughs> i like that <laughs> did. <laughs> well well let's just show what that would yeah, do I'm... if, if oh. we're looking at an observation of say 15 miles <laughs> and we were always going to put in our observation height of six feet right what that's saying is that on a geometric hidden, the Earth has dropped by 96 feet, right? That's how much it should have dropped. But when we actually include the, the sway, the, the swell and the waves and things like that, and let's say that there's six foot in total blockage of swell and wave height, that's going to reduce your viewer height. Instead of being at six feet, it's going to be at zero. So now you've got 150 foot of drop as opposed to 96 feet. So now when you see something in the distance, and you say, hey, I can see that building now. And then you realize that you're actually seeing it across water that's the same height as you. Hmm. The globe now has to come back with, instead of having refraction and stuff like this, is going to have to be super, super duper looming com compression and refraction and everything else that they want to bring into it to try hmm. and get around these observations because the blockage isn't earth curve. The blockage is just purely swell and waves. And if we can see long, long way and we put the correct details in this, this standard refraction is going to become irrelevant. They're going to have to do, they're going to literally have to go back to the drawing board and come up with a different standard refraction. Standard refraction as we know it is going to have to change for the globe. They will have to remodel their entire outlook uh, to try and make these um, observations work for them because no longer will standard refraction cut it. Boys, is there anything you want to say and wrap up with before we Yeah, I can, I can wrap up for myself. And that yeah. would be that um, a year, well, over a year ago now, when I first started going on to this study, um, which was the start of last year. Um, so we're already about 17 months into this. Um, I was told after just a few months of doing this, why do you keep on doing this, Ranty? We're bored of this. We're bored of you going out and doing these observations. They prove nothing. The observations do nothing. They don't help anybody. They don't do this, that, and the other. Just give it up. I was told by flat earthers, by globe earthers, to stop doing it. Huh. And let me tell you, if I'd have stopped doing it, I am sure we wouldn't be in this position right now. Um, and that's simply because the amount of data that we've, we've actually, well, I've actually collected and the amount of work that I've done behind the scenes, looking at every single observation, comparing them, making a concise argument for defeating the inferior mirage, proving compression, all this kind of stuff. It wouldn't have happened if I'd have done what people were telling me to do, which was stop doing what I was doing. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't looked into the stars. I haven't looked into anything to do other than optics and the horizon. That's all my entire channel has been about. 
my one focus, my only goal on Flat Earth was to just study this. I don't profess to be an expert in it in any way, shape or form, but what I can say is that through these repeated observations and repeated uh, scrutiny of these results, we have now had the Globers shift their globe posts. The globe posts have been moved, they had to do this as a, mm -hmm. as a, as a direct uh, response to the work that I put out and other people are now starting to elaborate on. The word's getting out, it, the work was worth it. All those people that told me to stop back then, I have two fingers for you and both <laughs> of them are in the middle. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do it, but you know, you get the message, it's like, you know, uh, that's my favourite one. <laughs> I'll just do that. <laughs> <laughs>